Um, so this is the data, um, the Excel spreadsheet. We started, we were working on Thursday. Remember when I was showing you how to make the tables and we added three worksheets at the bottom? We have data cleaning, data edits. So data cleaning is where we were putting all our notes and calculations of what we were doing. The next one, and we're gonna come back. Um, this is what I wanted you to finish, but I know you've had a lot to do. So we're gonna keep working on this. Um, and then we have the data edits where we were capturing anything that we were gonna be doing. And then we have the da clean data, which is where we are kind of slowly moving through this data and, and creating clean data. Okay, so back to data cleaning. All right, um, so I went ahead and finished out the, the erroneous data and it came out to 4%. So I added a total on the end <coughs> and I'm adding up, I'm, I'm using the sum function to add up how many records were messed up. And then remember I copied over this formula. Um, I wanted to show you how I'm doing this highlighting because this, I'm using something called conditional formatting and conditional formatting is a nice useful thing to know how to do. So for conditional formatting, first of all, I'm gonna erase what's in there. So I'm gonna go in here and erase the formatting by going to clear all formats, clear formats, okay? So you don't, yours, yours is not like this already, okay? Um, you, you probably only got as far as uh, sex and birth date and maybe a little bit in college. I don't know if you worked on this on your own or not. I know some people were working on this on their own, fin finishing, filling it out. But um, what we, since this is a percentage, we're going to format this whole bottom here. Um, uh, remember, because I cleared all formats, I got to create a table out of it again. So I got to go down here on the borders, home. And I go to this window pane looking thing and I go down to all borders, okay. Now, the other thing is these numbers in here are percentages. So I'm gonna go over here to the uh, home ribbon in the middle is where this little percentage thing is. I'm gonna make this percentage and I'm gonna increase the decimal by one just because I wanna be a little more, I wanna have a little more precision on, on making my decisions using this, okay. Now, granted, I recognize that maybe you haven't done this, you can do this on your own, but once you've, once you've gone through all of these, um, you'll have a total. Now, what I'd like to do is color code this. So I'm gonna color code these numbers and I'm gonna go up here to conditional formatting, which is also on the home tab. And you come over to, to styles and go to conditional formatting. And I'm gonna highlight which, if I have a problem or if it's okay. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna highlight if it's greater than, and I'm gonna put 0 0.5, sorry, not 0 0.05 for 5%. Then it's gonna be light red fill with dark red text. And I'll hit okay. Okay, so none of them are, are highlighted right now. Now I'm gonna select those same exact cells. I'm gonna select those same exact cells and I'm gonna add another layer. So we're layering the formatting. So the first one is it's going to be red if it's greater than five. Now I'm going to put one that's going to put it green if it's under five. Okay, so in here, I'm going to go back to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than. And now here I'm going to put the 0 0.05 again, but down here on the light fill with red, light red fill, I'm going to select green fill. Okay. All right. So you can see that I have green um, because all these percentages were under 5%, all right? And that's what I did down below when I was counting up the missing. So remember in, my, in our class on Thursday, we started going over how you calculate using count blank, how many are missing. So I'm gonna leave it up to you to make your Excel file look like this one, okay? I'm gonna, now the next thing we're gonna talk about after you figure out all you're missing is what are we gonna do? We have to look at this. We have to say decision round one, okay? So when we go through this, the first thing we notice is like, oh no, we got 29% of our records have a missing value in them. We cannot delete 29%.
And we can remind ourselves for sure that we can't because we'll go over to our analysis plan. And I'm gonna, you always wanna have your analysis plan either printed out, it doesn't hurt to have it printed out or up on your screen somewhere. All right, so let me move this over so we can all see this together. So if you've worked on your analysis plan this weekend, you'll be familiar with this statement. But the, we want to say missing values will be documented. We just got done doing that, right? By the way, um, I'm going to toggle between open things on my computer, and I can do that on a Windows PC with Alt-Tab. And it allows me to pop around what different things I have open. Alt tab as I, ta I hit tab multiple times, I can see different things. So uh, there's a way to do that on a Mac and I don't know it. <laughs> so someone, you'll have to figure that out, Google it or something. But okay, so now I'm gonna come back over here and I see that um, I've tallied all my missing. So this is the part where um, you have to do this by Thursday. So I've tallied all the missing and I put what percentage of the data they are. And notice I put the percentage that each var variable has of missing records. Toggle over now to my analysis plan, and I'm gonna see that it says overall, no more than 5% can be deleted. So I need that overall number. That's why I added total to my table, okay? So I'm looking at my total table, my total column, and I'm at 29. This is not good, right? All right, so now we gotta decide what we're gonna do. And this is a little squish down here. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to um, freeze this. So I want to, I want to be able to, sorry, I just have that row five visible. So I'm going to come over here to the first piece of data that is actual data that I don't care if it's frozen. And I'm going to go to the upper left corner of that. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to freeze panes and freeze panes. Okay, so this lets me see the variables. All right, so here's where we're at. All right, so now um, we have way too many things that we have to delete. So we're gonna follow the instructions that are in the analysis plan. So in the analysis plan, it says, okay, if the percentage of missing records is small for a specific variable, the rows with missing values will be deleted. This will be done all or nothing for a given variable. Okay, great. So we could delete them, but overall no more than 5% can be deleted. Now, if you read through all of this, so this doesn't apply. You have to have it in there for lo logically, you can't have any gaps in your analysis plan. You have to say, what's get, what are you gonna do if your uh, number of missing is less than 5%, but we're in a situation where we're over 5%. We still need that in our analysis plan to have a correct analysis plan. So you don't want any logical gaps. So we're gonna look at our missing. And we're gonna say, is it less than 5%? And this needs to, so this is in the analysis plan. This is the logic, right? And then we're gonna say, or are we, we can say less than or equal to, or are we greater than 5%? Okay, so we're in the great, so we have to have both things written and that is in my analysis plan. Okay, now that we know that we are actually, we've now gone this way, let's see what happens in our analysis plan here. So now we say, okay, if the percentage of missing values is larger than 5% or overall more than 5% for a numerical variable, the following will be done. And then we have several things we're gonna do if it's numerical. And then down below it says if the percentage is, so when we look at over 5%, we're gonna go numerical. And then there's gonna be instructions on what to do when it's a, if it's, numerical variable, and then if it's categorical. And this is all the stuff we talked about last week. So what are we going to do in each of those cases, right? And then we keep reading, and it says the order of imputation. So now it's telling us in our branch, which is the order. Like what, if we have to go down multiple branches, which in this case we do, what's the order? So it says you're going to start with the numerical variable. So this is where we're gonna start. And this is gonna be the second thing, okay? We're gonna start with the numerical and then proceed to the categorical variable, starting with imputing the records. 
Now, remember, we don't want to impute. Imputing is bad. We'd rather delete. Deleting is cleaner. Imputing means we're sort of making up fake data and it can cause our whole signal to be a little bit noisier. Think of a radio where you're getting more static coming through. All right. But it will allow us possibly to have enough data in the variables we care about. So that's one of the reasons we want to do it. All right. So now we're going to go, okay, we're going to start imputing records with the variables that have the least number of missing values until the total number of records that's left to delete is not more than 5% of the data. If we look at this, um, we're going to start with the numerical. Now, it's really easy to know which are numerical because you did all that work already. You can go over here to the variables, and we're going to go on this uh, little drop down, and we're going to select numerical. So if yours has many different ways you wrote numerical, that's fine. Just check them all. If you wrote it with a capital N one time, a lower N. So these are the ones we're going to go through first. And um, it would be nice to see this side by side. So I'm going to do the side by side view again. So I'm going to go to view at, and a new window. And I'm going to, now that I have two of them, I'm going to arrange them vertically. Um, only the, whoops. All right. So I have this one extra. Why do I have so much? I'm not sure why I have so much. Okay, I'll close one of them. Let me see if I can arrange them vertically again. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so these are the ones I'm going to look at first. These are the, and I'm going to go from smallest to biggest. So the smallest, um, so if I look at these, the smallest number is three overall, right? Three missing on income. So that's the smallest one. So in order to decide what to do, I'm going to go back to my analysis plan and it's going to give me the instructions on what to do. So I go to my analysis plan. And it says, um, so we are in the situation where we're in 2B on my analysis plan. If there are outliers, we're going to do a median imputation. Otherwise, we're going to do mean imputation, right? That's what we talked about last week. So let's do that. So we're going to go in here. We got to figure out if there's outliers on income. So the way we're going to figure this out is we're going to need to create a box plot. Remember, we talk about how we figure out if there's outliers. That's also in our analysis plan. So I'm going to add some space in here for a box plot chart. So I'm going to add about that amount. No hard set rule. I just need space so I don't overwrite things. All right. Now I want to show you how I'm going to add a box plot in here. So I'm going to go to the data. And I'm going to look at income. So I'm going to find the income column. And are these, OK, I think I need to freeze this. So let me go here over here to A2. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go to freeze panes and freeze that so I can keep track of income. So I'm going to click H. And I'm going to go ahead and use the label. I, it may not show up in my chart, but I'm going to try. Now, there's when you have two views open like this, Excel is weird. It wants to only make the chart in the table where the data lives. So we have to do that here. And so we can go insert. So the insert tab and in the middle it says charts and right in the middle of all the charts is a little histogram figure. Click on the little histogram figure and come down a box and whisker. Now you have a box and whisker in it. Excel put it right smack on top of all your data. All right, but what we want to do is we want to put it over here in this data cleaning workshop where we're keeping track of everything. All right, so the way you're going to move it is just the way you move most things. You're going to cut and paste it. So we're just going to cut this. So I'm going to I'm going to do Control X on a Windows, and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to select a spot um, here. So now I've moved it over here. Now, uh, just to make th life a little easier, I'm gonna make this window bigger so we can see what we're doing. All right, so here's the chart. I see that I actually do have outliers in this. In this. I'm gonna change the chart title to income. And I don't need to do at this point anything with finding the quartile, interquartile range or anything like that. 
This is just a visual to tell me what is my imputation going to be. So I'm going to kind of try to line this up. Now I don't even care really what the values are yet. At this point, I just, what I care about is that I have dots outside of my whiskers. All right, so do I have outliers? Do I have outliers in the income data? What do you think? Do I have outliers in the income data? Yes. Yes, because I have dots that are beyond the whiskers, right? So I'm gonna come out here and that means what's my method of imputation for the missing? Since I have outliers, do I use a mean imputation or median? Median. So this is decision round one. We may have more than one decision round. We're gonna start with decision round one. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap text. Let me see, let me get all the way over and get everybody in here. Okay, and I'm gonna make this one a little bit wider. Okay, so we're gonna do me median input imputation. Um, I'm gonna need a little more information here. So actually I'm gonna go over to the margin and I'm gonna add rows, I need space. So I'm gonna add some rows here, maybe five rows. We can always add more or take them away if we need to. So I'm gonna insert those rows. Okay, so let's get that calculation. Oops. So now that I added calculation in there, let's go ahead and get the median of the income. So we're gonna say equals median. Hopefully you know this function in Excel. And it doesn't matter if you're in the exam group two, group exam grading option two, you should be working on this, okay? All right, so the median, so you're gonna come over here to the data and we're gonna, and we're gonna select all the um, income data. Excel is smart enough that I can actually click at the bottom and then scroll to the top. And it's not gonna let me drag the, the bar, unfortunately, but I can scroll to the top and hit. Um, shift and click and notice over here on my formula, it goes from H2 to H201, so we're good. Close the parentheses and hit enter. And notice I got all hashtags. The reason I got hashtags is I don't have enough space, right? So I can go up here to the I and double click on this solid line right here. All right, so we now we have this median income and that's what we're gonna use to replace our missing values still missing and the percent. So we're gonna try to keep track because we're trying to get that 29% over here on the far right. We're trying to get that to be below 5%, right? So we're gonna, we're still, so we're at this median imputation right now. Um, and that's our calculation. And we're gonna need all of this to be part of this table. So let me go ahead and highlight all this. And I'm gonna go to that window pane and hit all borders. Okay, so now we have the whole thing as a table. Okay, let me come back over to income so we can see where we're working and I can move now my income box and whisker right underneath income. Okay. All right, so now I go over to my data and I'm gonna select the missing. There's three missing. So I go to the data, I go, I unselect the select all, I scroll to the bottom where it says blanks <coughs> and I click on the blanks. So those are the three missing. Now I'm going to copy these rows over. So I'll select them by going to the left margin over here and I hit control C or command C. Now I'm gonna come over here to the data edits worksheet and I'm gonna put those in here. Okay, so now I'm in the data edits worksheet and I'm gonna come over to income and just like we did last week, we need a little space to the right of income where we're gonna have the, me the median imputation. So I'm gonna insert and I shift those cells right. So now we have a little space here and I'm just gonna write a note to myself. This isn't required, but I'm just gonna say it's the median um, just so I know. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say equals and this is in case the data changes, I'm gonna say equals and I'm not gonna hard code that number in. I'm gonna say equals, I'm gonna come over here, right click so I can see all my open worksheets, go to the data cleaning notes. 
And let's go over to where that was. Wait. Oh, I got to make this one smaller. <laughs> Sorry, it's so much easier when I have a bigger monitor, a bigger monitor. But OK, I'm going to point to this number right here. OK, so I'm pointing to that number. I'm going to hit Enter. And now you see it showed up right here. OK, now I want to copy that down, but I don't want it to change. So I have to freeze that location of where it's pointing to for that median. So I'm going to click up here on the formula bar. Remember, function F4 puts dollar signs in front of that. So I'm going to hit function F4 and I have dollar signs. So now I have that and now I can drag grab that little green box on the bottom right of my Excel cell and just drag that down. And that copies it down. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little box all around this and highlight that in yellow so it's really clear. I've now documented what I've changed. So now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna to go to my clean data. So right click, go to my clean data. I'm gonna to go to income and I'm gonna replace those blanks. So at first I got to find them. So here's where my my income is missing. I'm going to um, actually copy what's here. So I want to copy that this is pointing to where the median is being calculated. So I'm going to copy that over here and I'm going to select these three cells and then hit control V. So now I have these three cells have been changed. We wanna change that. We're gonna to go to the home. We're gonna to go to the bucket, drop down by the bucket and go down to no fill. Okay, so now we've taken care of income. So I'm gonna come back over here to data cleaning and I'm gonna highlight this in green. Now notice that, look what happened to our box plot. It's vanished. The reason our box plot vanished is because it's automatically filter, it's, it's dynamically changing based on the data that it, was in that original spread uh, worksheet of data. And because we had filtered to the blanks, there's nothing there. But if we go to the data tab and go to the funnel with a little red X and clear all the filtering, you'll see our box plot comes right back. So don't worry, your box plots are gonna be changing in the very end. When you clear your filters are all show up again. Okay, don't panic. All right, so now that we've done this much, we wanna know the number still missing. So I'm gonna highlight the ones that I had missing from before. I'm gonna copy those down to the number still missing and I'm gonna click on paste numbers. Okay. And this income we're gonna to change to a zero because that's the one we just got done doing. Okay. So just to make this a little bigger so we can all see it. We still need to get the totals here. So I'm going to copy this. All right, so we went from 57 records that we had missing data. Now we're at 54 and our percentage dropped from 29% down to 27%. Okay, so you're going to want to keep going doing this. All right, and what I'd like for you to do is have this part completed um, going through the um, analysis plan in that in that order, fixing your missing. Okay, so you'll be some you might do median, some you might do mean, depending on if you have outliers or not. Okay, um, I think as you go through this, it's just a matter of imputing mean or median, figuring out which ones you have, going through the list in the order of imputation that we've just outlined in our in our workflow. You are going to get to a place where you have to look at satisfaction. And satisfaction is categorical, and you're going to end up having to look at this one. So this is a little foreshadowing. Okay, I'm giving you a hint. You're going to get to this point where you have to figure this one out. So when we figure, when we're trying to figure out this one, we're going to read in our analysis plan that what we're going to do for categorical is um, if we have more than five percent overall, and you still will when you get there. Um, you're going to have to um, use the most frequent and for satisfaction. Okay, so in here for satisfaction, we're going to we have to figure out what our decision is. So in order to do that, we're going to need a pivot table. And I just want to remind you what a pivot table is like. All right, so for satisfaction, I need a pivot table here. I'm going to 
get the data. So let me shrink this one back down and I'm, I'm gonna scroll over now to where that is. So here, I'm gonna go over to the data on the left and I'm going to select satisfaction. This is the categorical. And we wanna make a pivot table from this. Okay, so I'm gonna select this whole <laughs> column of data. So I go down to the bottom one. Once you select it, you're gonna go up here to the insert tab. And on the very left under tables, go to pivot table. Now, once you select pivot table, it's gonna automatically wanna put in a new worksheet. Instead, you're gonna click existing worksheet and click inside the location and then come over here under satisfaction and click this cell and then hit okay. <clears throat> okay. So now that you've done that, you will have a pivot table show up here on the left, on the right. I'm gonna just expand the right so it's a little easier to see. You may or may not, usually you get a, is it somehow defaulted to here? All right, well, that's fine. Let me show you what you do. You click on this table, you go up here to the top where it says um, design, no, analyze. And you click where it says under show field list. I'm gonna take satisfaction and drag it down to rows. So now notice this has blanks, mutual somewhat, all the different categories. Now take your satisfaction and drag it down again to values. So you drag it down twice and it's giving me the count. Which of these is the most frequent response? Somewhat. Somewhat. So our decision for this one is we're gonna impute <clears throat> to somewhat satisfied. Okay, so then I'll let you go through that. And once we finish that, you'll have zero here. So I just wanted to go over a pivot table because that's one of the things you're gonna have to do besides box plots for when you get to categorical. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna go through and we're gonna look at the analysis plan is we're gonna have to deal with outliers. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all this today because I wanna teach you some new material, but I wanna get you started. So down below, we're going to get the dimensions of the clean data. Okay. And um, so in here, you're going to use the count. You're going to count just like we did way above. You're going to count anything for rows and columns and get your number of data points. And um, when you're looking at outliers, that only applies to numerical variables. You can't have an outlier for. Uh, categorical. So we're going to get our numerical variables in here. So let me remind you how to do that. So hopefully what I'm showing you now starts to feel familiar. Um, we're going to go over to the data. Uh, sorry, to the variables. And we've already subsetted this down to numerical because we were trying to figure out which ones we we're going to be looking at above. So we're going to grab and copy these names. And we're gonna come over here to the um, B39 for me, and I'm gonna paste them here, transpose them. So um, if you're on a Mac, it's paste special and then find the transpose option. Um, I noticed that they're like got some blue and stuff going on. So let me get rid of that. I'm gonna go up here to the eraser under editing on the home ribbon. <laughs> and I'm gonna clear the formats. Okay, does anyone remember now, how do we go about making these into the angled, the angled thing up top, right? We're gonna to go to the home and we're gonna find that AB pointing kind of diagonal and we're gonna check, put that one in here. And then we also wanna to add total because we're gonna to need to keep track of the total. Okay. All right. So we. We're gonna to need to count how many outliers, what percentage of the data are, what decision we're gonna do. And then just again, to help set you up, you're gonna to have to keep a record of how many you delete, what percentage of the data that is, and how many are remaining.
because the whole idea here is we want to delete as little as possible, right? So we don't want to just delete them all. First, we got to figure out how many we have. So I'm going to make another table out of all this. So I'm going to select all this. And hopefully by now, this is starting to feel familiar. I'm going to come up to the home, find that window pane, select the all borders option and click all borders. So I have now um, a table that I need to fill out. And I'm going to be filling out by creating box plots below for each one of these. So let me just get started on birthday. So coming over here to the data, you're going to want to do this on the clean data. And unfortunately, right now, we don't really have all the way clean data, but we're going to do the best we can. This after you fill in and deal with the missing, some of this may change a little for you. But for birthday, you don't need to put any box plots here if, unless there's outliers. So we're going to see if there's an outlier. So we go to birthday and we're going to select that column of data. Oh, this is like, I don't have freeze paint on yet. I can't. So um, for me, I get annoyed if I don't have it obvious what variable I'm on. So go to birthday. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. And I'm going to insert a box and whisker. OK, notice um, birthday has no outliers, right? We don't see any outliers there. So we're going to come over here to birth date. I'm going to write clean. Actually, let me put zero. Let me put zero because we're going to add them up for the total. All right. So since that didn't have any, I don't need to keep it. I, I'm i OK deleting it. The next one is household size. Let's go over to household size and create a box and whisker plot for that one. So you select the data. We're going to go to insert and in the middle find that where that histogram is and then go down to box and whisker. Okay, where it looks like there's a couple of them here. So remember to move this into our data cleaning notes worksheet, we're going to we're going to do, we're going to do control X cut. We're going to come over here and we're going to paste it. Let's change the title on this to house size or whatever you want to call it. All right, and then we're going to make it nice and narrow because we don't really need it to be um, so wide. Oh, we still did. We still have um, the other columns up here. Yep, we got to go into view here and uh, freeze and unfreeze these. Not seeing it. Where is it? Oh, oh, I got to be in here. Sorry. Unfreeze these. And now I'm going to come down and reset up this one. So now I'm going to freeze here. So you want, as you're working with this, it'll get obvious about where to freeze and unfreeze. So for household size, um, we see that we have two of them. OK, then you need to get the percentage of the data. And that's what you're going to be doing for everyone that you have uh, outliers. OK, and then once you finish doing all that and making your decisions at the end of the night, a day on Thursday, you'll have your clean data with all the outliers addressed according to your plan that you put together in your analysis plan. <laughs>